You have an interaction with Sting on your second night in WCW mm-hmm. in 1989, uh, but it's not really followed up uh, during your first run. You this, wrote, go, ahead. Go, ahead, yeah, go ahead and read it. You wrote in your book, the next night we worked at the Dorton Arena in Raleigh where I had my first singles match with a talented young wrestler on the rise named Flying Brian Pillman. I went a full eight minutes with Brian, and we turned out a match that was excellent in quality and intensity. Terry Funk was doing the color commentary on the show, and if you listen closely, you can hear the Funkers' admiration shining through. I lost the contest but refused to leave the ring and was still there when Sting came out for the match. Being the hero to the little stingers that he was, Sting didn't take too kindly to my poor show of sportsmanship and proceeded to beat me all around ringside, including a backdrop over the guardrail that had the Dorton Arena fans ooing and eyeing in unison. Despite the fact that I had been both beaten and beaten up, <laughs> I was on cloud nine when I got to the dressing room because I knew I had done well. Minutes later, Funk, Sullivan, and even Buzz Sawyer were congratulating me on the match. Your second night in the company, rubbing yeah. elbows with the top guy, man. man. Sting, come yeah. on. Yeah, I could not have been happier. Like I said, just lost the match and was beaten up. Uh, I would follow that up by doing the same thing at the Clash of the Champions with Moscaris. I lose the match to Moscaris, then got beaten up by Wolf Wild, the drummer of the house band. Not quite the same. Not quite the same thing. Uh, yeah, I really was on cloud nine, and that seemed to open up... Um, some eyes as to what I might be able to do. And, uh, and also the, I think they realized early on, Hey, this guy's got the, I had the proponents there. I had corny, I had Sullivan, uh, that the, the ability to take cool looking big bumps is a benefit can really benefit a top guy, even if it's not a program, even if it's just that one off. And I believe that was the only interaction I had with Sting. There may have been others had Sting not been hurt. So uh, the day, the the night, uh, two days after that match in Dorton Arena, um, I was in a bad car accident. Right. So I, I wrestled uh, did the, uh, with Nasty Ned Brady, owner of some of the best facial expressions in all of wrestling. And a great, when I say underneath, you, that's meant as a, a as a compliment. You know, we need underneath talent just like we need top talent. Uh, I turned on him after our match, dropped the big elbow. That was the night of the, the bang, bang. First time bang, bang came. And 24 hours later, I'm in an emergency room uh, bleeding, you know, badly from several places uh, due to a car accident. Uh, and Sting... I think early February at a wild thing, not well, no, not the wild thing pay-per-view, but probably the f- clash that followed, uh, destroyed his patellar tendon and was out for six, eight months.